Can the Detroit Lions get a win against the Washington football team? Did you realize that you are a champion in their eyes? Subscribe to the members of ISN. Hey there, football fans. My name is Derek, and this is the Gridiron Blitz. Be sure to subscribe if you like the video and like it as well because we talk all things football. I just want to say thank you guys as this is my first official video after reaching 10,000 subscribers. I could not have done it without you guys and I thank you so very much. It means a lot as it is just one small step in the grand scheme of YouTube and 100K. So thank you guys so much. And now let's get into the video. The Detroit Lions are going to host the Washington football team this week. And both teams are not that good this year. And it's ironic that the Washington football team had the second overall pick in last year's draft and the Detroit Lions drafted right after them. The Washington football team was able to beat the Detroit Lions last year right around the same time and still managed a higher pick than the Detroit Lions in drafting Chase Young. And we then took Jeff Okuda. So for the first time since those two were drafted, these two teams will see each other. We'll see who will have the upper hand, Chase Young or Jeff Okuda. So now let's do what we do every week and look at ESPN and check out the stat line. So as we look at the game cast here, the matchup predictor, which is one of my favorite things, I don't know why about this site, one of the only the second time this season that the Detroit Lions have been favored to win a game, having a 53% chance to Washington's 46. Let's look, let's take a look at some of the leaders for each team. Dwayne Haskins, which he will not be the quarterback. It's already said that Alex Smith will be the quarterback against the Detroit Lions is 89 for 146 with 939 yards with four touchdowns and three interceptions. Matthew Stafford was having a pretty decent on and off year. You just never know what Matthew Stafford you're going to get. He did have a pretty hard time yesterday, went through some family issues, was not able to practice, and was on the COVID-19 list as well. Matthew Stafford is 174 for 278 with 2,227 yards, four touchdowns, and seven interceptions. So he throws two touchdowns for every one interception. Let's look at the rushing leaders for each team. Gibson has 90 carries for 391 yards, with five touchdowns. Adrian Peterson is still the lead back with 93 carries, 350 yards, and two touchdowns. McLaurin is 50 receptions for 692 yards with three touchdowns. And wide receiver Danny Amendola, the absence of Kenny Galladay, and leads the Detroit Lions with 25 receptions for 401 yards yards let's look at the injuries for the washington football team quarterback kyle allen wide receiver dontrell inman wide receiver jeff bidet uh jerron christensen senior and dustin hopkins the place kicker are all some are questionable and some are out now let's look at the uh, detroit lions injury report all of these guys are questionable with a very intriguing name on this list mr kenny galladay is questionable uh, last week, he was out with a hip injury, so hopefully he will play because we have yet to win a game this season without him. Linebacker Christian Jones, running back Jamal Agnew, wide receiver Kenny Galladay, as I stated earlier, TJ Hawkinson, and Jared Davis are all questionable. Now, Jared Davis was placed on the COVID-19 uh, list. So let's look at the, the the team stat lines here and i did blow it up so you guys could see it better on paper the detroit lions are a better team and theoretically should win this game but we know how this goes you really can never count on this team to do anything they lose to the teams teams they should beat and they beat some of the teams they should lose to so washington scores 19 points a game the detroit lions the lions score 24.6 points allowed per games now here's where washington is Quite a bit stiffer, allowing only 23.5 to the Detroit Lions, 30 points a game. The previous two games, the Detroit Lions allowed exactly 41 points, both times uh, averaging 
allowing 82 points over the last two games, which is pretty, pretty abysmal. They did start the week as the number 16 defense. After Dalvin Cook shredded them up, I'm sure that's not the case anymore. Total yards would be 333.1 for the Washington football team and for the Lions, 378.8. Yards passing, 238.9 for Washington, 277.6 for the Detroit Lions. Rushing yards, 92.3. I'm, I'm telling you, it's, last week it was 97.1. Today it's 92.3. The Detroit Lions rush for 101 yards per game. Yards allowed. The Detroit Lions allow over 400 yards, allowing 405 yards per game to the Washington football team's 337. So as you can see, the defense is a lot stingier than the Detroit Lions. So that might be an issue for the Lions. Passing yards allowed. It's going to be 208 for Washington and 257 for the Detroit Lions. Rushing yards allowed. Wow, I can't believe this. Even after getting shredded by Dalvin Cook, the Detroit Lions only still allow 148 yards to the Washington football team's 128.6. Washington has a 2-6 record halfway through the season. They are also 0-3 on the road this year, with their last five games going 1-4 with a week, uh, I believe it was a week 8 win coming against the Dallas Cowboys 25 to 3. The Detroit Lions, however, are not that much better, bearing at 2 and 3 in their last five games, losing to the Saints, Indianapolis Colts, and Minnesota, and beating their last win coming dramatic in dramatic fashion against the Atlanta Falcons in week seven or eight, I believe it was, whichever week it was. So they are three and two over the last five games. So I'm telling you, these teams are, they really shouldn't even be close, but yet they are. You have a two and six team against a three and five team. So here are just my thoughts and some keys to winning, which I'm kind of tired of going over actually, because it's the same thing every week. Rush the pass or stop the run and limit the turnovers. You know what I mean? It's the same thing every single week. So I'm just going to give you uh, my prediction and, and some things that I want to see. I want to see the offensive line protect Matthew Stafford. Uh, he did enter concussion protocol after the game, during the game on Sunday, but he cleared it re relatively quickly after the game was over. I think within an hour or two, it had come back that he would had clear concussion protocol. So with Chase Young on that defensive line, we have to protect Matthew Stafford. That's one of the things we have to do. Matthew Stafford also was not looking very good last week. I know he had a lot of things on, on his mind. His daughter was rushed to the hospital, and he, he was unable to practice. He was literally isolated up until right before the game. So I don't think his head was in the right place. But we need Matthew Stafford to perform. We really do. We need him to go back to how he looked against the Atlanta Falcons, how he looked against the Jacksonville Jaguars, if we're going to have a chance to beat this team. Now, in addition to that, we have to also be able to run the football. We, we, DeAndre Swift is getting more and more involved in the offense, and we even saw some shades of Kerryon Johnson last week. When Kerryon Johnson comes onto the field, it is strictly to pass protect. However, the Detroit Lions changed that up last week, having Kerryon Johnson come out and run the ball, and we saw that it made a difference. But they were unable to stop Dalvin Cook as he ran the ball down their throats. I don't think Kenny Galladay is going to play this week. Hopefully, he'll come back next week. We need him. We need him. Whatever the contract situation is, we need to make sure that we keep this man happy and on the roster because without him, our offense is severely limited because we really don't have that guy that's going to stretch the field. Marvin Hall can catch a deep ball, but he's not a deep consistent deep ball threat you know what I mean so we have to be able to move the ball and hopefully we can do it against the Washington football team but as I went over the stats their defense is a lot stingier than ours so it's not going to be easy and we saw that the, the the Lions couldn't even take advantage of a the last or second to last pass defense in the National Football League against the the Minnesota Vikings last week so I really don't know what to expect from this team. But I am going to once again, probably maybe for the last time this season, 
I'm going to say that the Detroit Lions will win this Sunday to move to four and five. And the Washington football team will go to two and seven. However, this we are in week 10 now. And the tide is about to change. Next week, the playoff predictor opens up on ESPN. And we're going to go over that every single week until the Detroit Lions are eliminated from playoff contention. Because at this point, we're going to start swinging to the offseason. Matt Patricia's job security, Bob Quinn's job security, the future, the draft, things that I don't want to talk about during the season. We're going to have to talk about at that point. So with that being said, Leave your comments in the comment section below. Do you think the Detroit Lions will beat the Washington football team? And if you do score predictions, leave that in the comments as well. My name is Derek. This is the Gridiron Blitz. Be sure to tune back here live on Sunday at 1245 Eastern Standard Time as we have the Lions versus Washington football team watch party where hopefully we can will the Detroit Lions to a win. So I look forward to seeing you there. I want you guys to say, stay safe, take care of yourself, because I want to see you on Sunday.